This video will help you find the x and y intercepts of an exponential function from a graph, from an equation, and from a word description. First, let's look at the graphs. This first graph, when you're looking for the x and y intercept, you're looking for where the curve crosses the x and y axis. So looking at the x axis, the curve crosses it at 1. That means the x intercept is 1, 0. Looking at the y-axis, the curve crosses the y-axis at a negative 2. That means the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Now look at the second graph. If I'm looking for the x-intercept, notice that the curve isn't crossing the x-axis. In fact, it's looking like it's leveling off right around the 2. So that means there is no x-intercept. I just write none. For the y-intercept, the curve crosses the y-axis at 3, so the y-intercept is 0, 3. Now let's look at some equations. When you want to find the x-intercept from an equation, you make the y-value equal to 0. So I set y to 0, and then I solve for x. The first thing I would do would be to add 64 to both sides, and I get 64 equals 4 to the x. Then it's just a matter of guessing until you get to the right number, or pretty close. If I look at this one, 4 to the first is 4, 4 to the second is 16, and 4 to the third is 64. So that means that my x is equal to 3. The x-intercept is then 3, 0. For the y-intercept, this time let x be 0. I have y equals 4 to the 0 minus 64. This you just need to simplify. 4 to the 0 is 1, and 1 minus 64 is a negative 63. The y-intercept is then 0, negative 63. For the next one, do the same thing. For the x-intercept, let y be 0, and then solve for x. I would minus 10 from both sides. Negative 10 equals 2.5 to the x. Here we have a problem because an exponential by itself isn't ever going to be 0 or less. There is no number you can put in for x that makes 2.5 to the x equal to a negative 10. That means there is no x-intercept, so I write none. For the y-intercept, let x be 0 and simplify. 2.5 to the 0 is 1, and 1 plus 10 is 11. The y-intercept is 0. 11. For the last part, let's look at word descriptions. The population of a town is 50,000. The population of the town is increasing at a rate of 3% each year. When you're looking at word descriptions, the first thing you want to try and decide is what are the x values and what are the y values? What's the input and the output? So for this example, the input is going to be a year. The increase of the population is going by years. So my x values are going to be years, and then the y values are going to be the actual population. That means for the x-intercept, I want to know when the population is equal to 0. Well, that's a problem in this one because the town's at 50,000 to start with and going up 3%. That means there isn't going to be a time when the population is 0. So to explain my reason why it's none, I need to say that the population won't ever be zero. For the y-intercept, I want to know what's the population at year zero. So at year zero, that would be the starting point. That means it's 50,000. The y-intercept would then be 0, 50,000. 
In other words, when I'm saying what it means is that the population started at 50,000 or it was 50,000 in the beginning. You could also look at an equation for this. If I wanted to, I could say that it was y equals 50,000 times 1.03, that's the growth rate, to the x. Notice I could then do what I did with the equations before, let y be 0 and then let x be 0. You'd still get the same answers. So you can use an equation if you want. Let's look at one more uh, example. Okay, you bought a new laptop this year for $800. The value of the computer will depreciate at the rate of 29% per year. So depreciate means that the value is going down 29% every year. And again, think about the input and the output. My x values are again going to be the years. Every year it's going down. And the y values or the output is going to be the value of the laptop, how much it's still worth. So for the x-intercept, I want to know how many years until the laptop is no longer worth anything. For this one, it would be a really good idea to look at the equation first. Then, then you can figure out the x-intercept. So it would look like y equals 800 times 0.71 to the x. So it would be just a matter of, of guessing until I figured out how many years until it's around zero dollars. So I could guess 10 years to start with. We'll see if that's enough. That's $26 about. That's pretty close. Let's try just for fun to see what it is at 15 years. That's $4.70. I could keep going. It's going to take a little while to get it to be really close to zero. Technically, it's never going to actually be zero. But after a while, at uh, 20 years, it's 84 cents. I think we call that pretty close to zero. Well, 85 cents. So I could say that the x-intercept is around... 20 years, meaning that after 20 years, yeah, the computer has no value. The y-intercept would be the value of the computer at year zero, in other words, the beginning amount. Well, that one's easy, it's $800. So the y-intercept would be 0, 0,800. In other words, in the beginning, the computer was worth $800. Hopefully this helps you with your x and y intercepts for exponential functions. Feel free to go and look back over this again, and good luck with your assignment.